is the same. 한쪽 귀로 듣고 한쪽 귀로 흘려보낸다. Which roughly translates into what you hear from one ear falls out from the other. There are always people who just seem to never listen to us. And we all know of that one person who could improve in their listening skills. Question yourself, which type of listener are you? Are you a passive listener or an active listener? I was not a good listener up until the eighth grade. Tell me anything and I forget about it the next day or even after an hour. Now, you might be thinking, Suyan, you're in 10th grade. What makes you think you're qualified enough to talk about active listening after two years of it? And you're right. I'm still in the process, but according to the University of Missouri, most people listen with an efficiency of 25%. How can we all improve on this statistic? I'll start. In eighth grade, I got into a disagreement with one of my classmates because of an assignment. It made me feel awful. I cried the whole morning. So one of my teachers reached out to me during recess that day to talk. He asked me what happened and I told him how upset I was feeling. He listened to me without saying a word, but his constant eye contact and body language made me feel heard. It was the first time I had experienced the comfort of active listening. But first, what's the difference between active and passive listening? Passive listening is listening unconsciously, which can lead to the absence of a complete message understanding. The listener is barely involved, as in listening to a podcast, a YouTube video, or paying attention in a lecture without necessarily responding. On the other hand, in active listening, the listener pays attention and responds in both verbal and nonverbal ways, making it an interactive process. It builds empathy and social connections. And it's usually used during conversations. Whenever I have a problem, I usually go tell my mom. So technically, both my mom and my teacher are active listeners, but they listen in different ways. My mom tends to respond with words, whereas my teacher responded with body language. We can associate one as a better active listener since both show traits of active listening. Then why did I feel more comfortable talking to my teacher? We need to acknowledge that different people have different listening needs. During our conversation, my teacher gave minimal focus to resolving the issue. Yet, I still remember how good I felt afterwards. In this way, listening does not always mean changing a person or resolving all issues. Alternatively, its purpose is to understand, empathize, connect, and make people feel understood. When we truly listen to understand, we create more enriching experiences. I know, listening is hard because it's a receptive process. It's straining to listen to someone. Contrary to listening, advice is a dispensing process that many people love. My mom is one of those people. At the end of the school day, she noticed I was feeling a little down, so she wanted to talk. But I know my mother, so I knew that she was going to give me her perspective on my story and criticize my classmate, which did happen. However, I just wanted to talk about my feelings to be comforted, not to be given advice. I didn't really want to talk in the first place because we were in the high school parking lot where everyone could have seen me sobbing. But here's how it went. 수연아, 너왜 그래? 학교에서 무슨 일 있었어? 아니, 그냥 어떤 일이랑 다투서 너무 속상했어. 뭐? 왜? 무슨 일이야? 걔 누구야? 아니, 엄마 모르는데 괜찮아. 그냥 좀 속상했어. 괜찮게 뭐가 괜찮아. 선생님을 얘기했어. 선생님은 뭐래? 아니, 선생님을 나중에 얘기하기로 했어. 엄마, 나 그냥 좀 혼자 있고 싶어. 얘 뭐래? Just to clarify, my mom wasn't particularly angry or anything. She was just excited. But we can see here that the first thing my mom asked was the details of the story, who I had the argument with, and what I was going to do next. But didn't want to talk about that? No. 
I just wanted her to understand that I was feeling upset. That's all. But for some people, like my mom, giving advice makes them feel like they're genuinely helping and caring for others. However, the priority should be to listen to understand, not listen to give advice. Let the other person know you care enough to understand and acknowledge what they have to say. People can say something like, I'm not really sure why you're feeling this way. Can you tell me a little more? Or, that's so great to hear. I know you really worked hard on that. Nonetheless, there are people who, unlike me, like to receive advice because it can be useful. At the end of a conversation, we can all say something like, I'm glad you told me. If there's anything you'd like to talk about or if I can help you in any way, I'm always here for you. There's room for your input while also respecting the speaker. Now, why is active listening important? I felt so much better after talking to my teacher about my problem and liked how I was able to resolve it on my own. I'm certain that all of you have a specific someone to whom you go to and tell them about any problem or worry in mind. For me that day, it didn't seem to be my mom, and that's okay. I don't blame her. Cultural differences also play a big role in how active listening can look like. This type of adult-centered conversation is part of Korean culture, where adults are considered highly and more worthy of respect. During a conversation, it's natural for the older person to talk about it, and large gestures, over-expressive facial cues, and direct eye contact can be considered disrespectful. Thus, the conversation with my mom followed part of my culture. The best response for me in that situation was to listen to my mom since she could provide me with some wisdom, which I unfortunately did not want. Again, it doesn't mean my mom is a terrible listener, just that the standard for effective listening looks different for individuals and cultures. I prefer for someone to empathize with me while they're listening rather than give me advice. And since 45 to 75% of our day involves listening, it's important for us to improve it at all costs. There are many ways to react to listeners, but there are general steps I think everyone can take to become better listeners. I know these steps have, at least, helped me reach the qualities of a better listener. An acronym you can use to remember is EAR, which stands for E, Evaluate, A, Ask Questions, and R, Roll. Let's start with E, Evaluate. How is this person feeling? What does this person want to hear? These are some questions you can ask yourself to come up with a thoughtful response and empathize with the other person. But keep in mind that thinking for too long can cause you to miss the moment. Let's think of it using the five second rule by Mel Robbins. Whenever you're thinking of doing something, count five, four, three, two, one, and act. Think of your response like an impulse. Now, what if you mess up? It's okay. Five, four, three, two, one, try again. What's important is that you give a response based on some thought. You might need to adapt your thinking along the way, but you learn to become a more attentive listener. Step two, ask questions. Ask questions instead of giving advice and make suggestions over advice. Questions are a great way to learn about anything. Asking good questions deepens your understanding of the other person and lets you empathize with them. Questions such as, I'm not really sure why you're feel feeling this way. Can you tell me a little more? Or would you like to talk about that? Are great questions that build empathy. Questions can be powerful. Suggestions can also be powerful. Let's compare. Uh, how would you, uh, I think you should try doing this to how would you feel if you tried this approach? See the difference? The second one gives the power of decision to the other person, while the first one is already making the decision for them. It's important to listen to the other person, to empathize with them and come up with effective solutions. But the role of the listener is to remind the speaker of their power to come up with effective solutions. This brings me to the last step, role. 
The two basic roles in a conversation are storyteller and the listener. Your role as a listener is to listen to know the whole story and get a deeper understanding. This implies responding in both verbal and nonverbal ways using body language. Avoid interrupting for this purpose as well. You know when you're trying to tell someone your problem but they just keep interrupting with, I think you should try doing this, or I know this great way for, it's annoying, right? It's important to listen to the whole story to get a deeper understanding, bringing out the joy of empathy. Remind the speaker of their power to come up with effective solutions. In some cases, the best the listener can do is to guide the speaker to get to where they want. Comments or suggestions such as, how would you feel if you tried doing this? Or how would you feel if you tried this approach instead of this? Are great ways to bring empathy and they give the power to the speaker, not the listener. Now, it doesn't mean that following these steps will automatically make you a better listener since everyone has different listening needs and everyone listens in a different way, but they're kind of like a template to a good listening process. I know, these steps might sound difficult or challenging at first, but once you start thinking about them and implementing them, it's only a matter of time until they become a natural part of your listening. In the end, it's up to us to receive and learn the information that we need to thrive. And listening is a great way to guide you there if you let yourself. Remember the steps with ear. Evaluate, ask questions, and roll. It can be challenging to keep what you hear from falling out the other ear but a number of stories and emotions wait for you to be heard. I think Larry King perfectly sums it up in his quote. I remind myself every morning, nothing I say this day will teach me anything. So if I'm going to learn, I must do it by listening.